In this live event, we're going to be discussing the All Mode Mobile Go Bag. Hello and welcome to the Ham Radio 360 Field Radio Podcast live stream event. My name is John Jacobs, W7DBO, and thank you to those that are tuning in live during this event, and thank you to those that have come in after the event in the archive. Like I mentioned, we're going to be covering the Ham Radio 360 Field Radio Podcast Mobile Go Bag, which is this bag, and in previous episodes, uh, we covered this bag right here, which is the... HT bag, and so if you're interested in watching the breakdown of this bag, of what everything goes in the handheld bag, uh, go ahead and click the link in the description or in the info card uh, to be able to watch the breakdown of this bag. So I'm going to go ahead and set this aside. And so today we're going to be talking about this bag. Before we get started, if you have not heard of the Field Radio Podcast, go to fieldradiopodcast.org. There you will find information on our bi-weekly podcast that releases, and then also the YouTube channel. And while you're here on YouTube, do me a favor and click that subscribe button and so you can get notifications of content like this. So let's go ahead and break this down. I'm going to move this over. So first of all, kind of noisy there, uh, this is a Husky Job Sight Sling Pack. So this is a Husky bag that's meant for construction site carrying uh, laptops and, and computers and stuff like that. So let me go ahead and I'm going to switch over to the uh, uh, slide deck before we get started on breaking this down. Let's go ahead and talk about a couple items. Uh, this is just review for what we talked about in the uh, last episode on go bags is our field expedient equipment. We want it to be modular. So this bag is going to build on the HT bag. There might be some duplication, but essentially we're going to build our uh, equipment like it's a uh, Legos and we're going to be modular so we don't have too much redundancy in equipment. We want it to be portable and portable is defined by what your use is. Do you want it to be portable for backpacking or portable to take in your car? Uh, we need it to be tested. We need to know our equipment and test it and so the time to figure out uh, it doesn't work or the cables are not interfacing correctly is not in the field. It's uh, in your living room or in your backyard. And then also we need to be organized, we need to know all of our equipment, and then lastly, understood. We need to know the capabilities of this equipment and what it can, and more importantly, what it cannot do. So the goals of operating is get on the air, stay on the air, be an effective communicator, and have fun. So let me switch back over here. And so let's start getting into this bag. There we go, there's my overhead cam. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna break down this bag like we did last time, and in the chat, go ahead and add any questions you may have. Chris Fielding, KG7 IVS is in there moderating for us tonight. And so if you can hear me and everything's working good, go ahead and uh, give me a thumbs up or a chat message so I know I have good audio and everything. So let's go ahead and break this down. So in the main compartment, uh, I have modular bags, so I've set things aside. So we'll go ahead and set those aside and then kind of walk through everything that's in these bag. So we'll first start with the radio. Now this radio is just specific to me because it happens to be my mobile radio, So, but obviously you just pick the radio uh, that meets your needs. Okay, so what I have is I have the ICOM IC, it's called the Mark IIG IC706 Mark IIG. Uh, that is the radio that I use. This is in all mode, so HF, VHF, and UHF. And on the bottom there, if you can see, it's got a LDG Z100 auto tuner. Uh, and I leave this kind of taped to the radio, uh, just gaff taped it in, because this is not only my mobile go bag radio, but when I'm in my truck, uh, this one also mounts under the dash of the truck. Uh, so that's kind of why I just have these two things uh, permanently attached. So obviously, the first thing in your mobile go bag would be your radio. And so that's, this is the one that I use. And so associated with that, of course, is uh, just the, the stock hand mic. Okay, so let's break down all the accessories, of course, that, that go with this radio. So the first thing we have is uh, we'll start with the antennas, of course. So we want to just walk through uh, what antennas we have here. And so first of all, for the VHF UHF, I have my favorite. Uh, roll-up J-pole antenna. 
This is the N9 Tax at n9tax.com. Uh, this is the a typical roll-up antenna. It rolls out this ladder line and then gives you some feed lines. So if you want a very durable, very well-tuned, excellent roll-up J-pole antenna, n9tax.com is where you want to go for that. And then for the HF side of the house, I have my favorite, which is the Pac-10 Mini. This is the uh, 9 to 1 Unun. Uh, this is just a great all-purpose, throw the line in the air, end fed random wire antenna. And as you can see, uh, it's going to fit in any pack, even if you're going ultra lightweight. Uh, this is your antenna of choice. Uh, so we'll have links to the N9 tax antenna and also the pack antenna. And then our friend uh, Stuart uh, get, get a very excellent review of this on taking these in soda operations. So I'll include uh, a link to his YouTube channel and also his review of this antenna. So this antenna is basically going to cover uh, between these two very lightweight antennas. Like I said, I kind of have a heavy radio because that's the one I have. Uh, I could very easily swap this out for uh, any of the Yesu brands or if I was lucky enough, an Elecraft, you know, at least on the HF side. Uh, but just simply, these two antennas is going to get you across the board uh, what you need in a mobile situation. And so the way you get these two antennas in the air, uh, you have a couple different options. This is what, what I do. You have uh, some throw line. Now, this is not regular twine. This is Arbor's, Arbor's rope. Uh, so it's uh, made for Arbor's, obviously, to, to throw up in trees. So it's very lightweight, uh, low resistance. And then I have what's called an Arbor's weight. This is a Weaver uh, Arbor weight. And so this weight, you just tie onto the string and uh, you throw this end underhand. And I'll, I'll link to a video where I, I do this, uh, launching this in the tree. Uh, you throw this up in the tree, obviously, the weight comes down. The other end, you've tied onto the end of the Pac-10 Pac Mini or the other end of your uh, 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 antenna for UVHF, UHF, your roll-up J-pole, and then uh, it just strings it up in a tree. And then where I'm out here in Utah, we got plenty of trees. Uh, so you just pick one tree for VHF, UHF, and one tree for HF. So I have two different ropes. So once I have the one secured, I just untie this weaver rate weight and then launch the next antenna up in the trees. So, and then uh, if you are in a situation where you don't have trees, or say you're working in a park pavilion or something like that. Uh, I just have some lash rope, some paracord, and then I have what this is a, a crappie pole. Uh, simply, it's a very lightweight uh, pole that just extends out and gets to the point where uh, it gets really down thin at the very top. So you just uh, extend this pole, uh, and then you can elevate your uh, antennas just using this crappie pole. Now, obviously, this doesn't fit in the bag but it just kind of sits an accessory. So I have two of these that kind of sit outside of the bag uh, in case I get in a situation where I need to extend my Pac-10 and Mini, and then I also need to extend my roll-up J-pole. So there is ways around if you don't happen to have something you can, you can hoist over. And so those are the items that go inside for antenna. So let's go down and break down a little bit more. Now I do have one other antenna, uh, and this is in the front and back. This is... Uh, a Nagoya uh, mag mount antenna. And so if you're in the situation where you're just uh, with your vehicle, now this is a VHF, UHF, Nagoya antenna only. This, I'll leave this in the description also and then in my pack list. This is a great antenna uh, for when you're traveling, especially via air and you just have your HT, you have that rental car and you need to uh, send, you know, put an antenna on the rental car. We use this when we travel, uh, took it to Dayton, took it to Hamcation in Florida, you just put that on the rental car, this nice short antenna length uh, fits in your carry-on. And so this is a way that you can uh, just get your VHF, UHF done with a simple mag mount. So we'll kind of pull more items out of the bag here and walk through it. So as I mentioned before, this is a modular system, so you're not going to see me address battery uh, in this bag because I have my power boxes. I have various power boxes, various solar boxes, uh, all things that can accompany this bag. But what I do address is, so I need uh, power pole cables. So whether I'm plugging this into one of my power boxes or I'm plugging in at a, some type of event station or something like that, 
uh, I have my power cord. And then I also keep one of these just in the bag. So like I said, I plug this in my truck. I already have a power pole line fed. Uh, all my vehicles have a power pole line fed into the, into the cabin. Uh, but if I happen to come across a vehicle uh, that doesn't, or if my vehicle goes dead, this is an MCOM, and you have a parking lot full of available batteries, uh, you just have a simple power pole to alligator clamp. And now I can pretty much adapt to any battery or car battery out there uh, just with keeping that. So other beyond that, talking about, we'll, we'll break down in future videos, uh, solar packs and battery pack uh, go bags. So that's the extent of that. So let me kind of fish through here and figure out what else I've left behind. Okay, so uh, a mini log, uh, something I just keep just because this is HF and I want to be able to log some comments in the field. Uh, so I have a mini log with a pen and pen and paper. Um, one thing I have in here is, of course, the instruction manual. And then because this is VHF, UHF, I have a list of all my local repeaters and whatever programming I've done in this. So manual, repeater programming, emergency family communication plan, uh, any additional documents, of course, FCC license, uh, ARIES documentation, all that fun stuff uh, goes in the, the document pack. Now, we could pause here with this pack and in a modular form, we've gone and addressed this uh, with our lines is we have our mobile pack and we've accomplished that. Now, because I have the room, I actually have a second item that's in my mobile go bag and that's my computer components uh, that go along with this radio. Now, I could put that in a separate bag, uh, but because there was room in this bag, I went ahead and kind of meshed those two things together. Now, this isn't my primary computer or my primary digital mode. This is more of a backup. And so I'll kind of break down what additional stuff is in this pack that kind of goes beyond the sense of a mobile go bag. But the benefit is, is I know my mobile go bag is all mode. So I can do phone and I can do digital modes. And then once I gain the skill, I can do CW. So I have all three modes. So first of all, the first item that is in here is, this is a, a Bionics Tiny Track 4 uh, that I use for, um, just GPS, APRS. So if you have this item, uh, and it has the accessories and cables and everything, and if I have the Bionics GPS antenna, uh, I can take this and plug it into this radio and make sure I'm tuned right on the radio, but I can turn this radio now into an APRS beacon. And then if I have my laptop, which we'll, I'll pull out here in a minute, uh, I can hook the other end of the laptop, and so not only can I send APRS data but I can also receive APRS data, data via, via this, uh, let me switch over to the overhead here so you can see it a little bit better, um, via this uh, Bionics Tiny Track 4. Uh, nice little device, you put the GPS antenna on one end, uh, you put the radio on the other end, uh, you have some power that also comes in these serial uh, ports, and then this just runs independent. The reason why I like this is because uh, a lot of times if you're trying to GPS beacon you have to have your laptop up and running the whole time. This one I don't. If I'm on the move and I don't want to be worrying about my APRS functioning off of a tablet or a laptop that has to stay operating, uh, this takes care of all of it. As long as you pre-programmed in all your data and all your settings, uh, you're good to go. Just plug this in, put the uh, GPS antenna mag mount up on whatever vehicle you're at, and you can be APRS beaconing. And then once again, you have the option to uh, go ahead and uh, ingest that data into also your laptop via a serial to USB cable. Uh, so that's the first additional item that I have put in here. Uh, second of all, I have this uh, small laptop. Now this is a Windows laptop for a reason because I want to be able to do WinLink on the go. And so I'm gonna need Windows for that. Uh, I do have a USB drive that has a Linux on it, so I could dual build this. Honestly, this is really, really slow running Windows computer. Uh, these little notepads or net pads are, are not very strong processor, uh, but they're really good uh, when it comes to running Linux. So I run Linux where I can for FL Digi uh, and other digital modes, uh, but if I have to run WinLink, I do need a uh, Windows laptop. Uh, I like these little guys because they run on 12 volt uh, power, and so and they don't they don't take up much power. My ICOM 706 Mark II G takes up enough power for enough of them, so uh, this laptop works quite well for that. So we'll go ahead and go to the I believe this is yes this is going to be the last item here. 
And this is a couple accessories for this. So we talked about this laptop being able to do FL Digi and digital modes. Uh, we have the SignalLink USB. Uh, this is your interface to go between pretty much any radio and any laptop. And you use this as the external sound card and the translator. So you just make sure you have the right cable and the pinouts inside to go from your radio to your laptop. And then that's what is your communication device. Now, another thing I need, I have my auto tuner uh, for my HF, but I also just keep in here, this is a nice little tiny uh, uh, SWR meter for my VHF, UHF. Uh, it just, of course, goes in and out. And so what this does is this lets me know a lot of times when you set up your antenna, especially in an unknown location, you set it up in an unknown, known, unknown location, um, you're not really sure what your SWR is. You don't know what you're interacting with or, or, or not. So this is a good device to plug in and make sure you checked. So it does the job and it, it stays inside the bag. So with that, we have kind of walked through uh, all those items. This is a pretty uh, simple, simple bag, simple setup. Uh, like I said, the computer part could have been in its own bag. And technically it could be, uh, but I like to put it in one bag. So I know when I grab this bag, uh, I have a full functioning all mode uh, setup. So looking at some comments here, uh, I have a comment about no fuse on the power cables. My double fuse is actually on the cable that goes from the radio to my power pole. So I always fuse, I always fuse right at the radio source before the radio. And then also all my battery boxes, everything is already fused. Uh, so that already handles that. But in the case, like you said, yes, this is not fused uh, because if I went directly from here to my radio, my little power cable that goes into the back of my radio is fused. So let's see anything else here. Uh, Jonathan Bordeaux says the roll-up J-Pole works great. Um, he's got a contact over 100 miles in soda activation with it at five watt HT, I believe it. We have been able to bring this roll up J-Pole up camping and we have been able to hit uh, repeaters that we are well outside of the range. So if you, know, like I said, if you're looking for a great antenna, the n9tax.com roll up J-Pole antenna. And then also if you're looking for a great pack antenna that I have made contacts, I've made DX contacts off this down to South America um, is the pack antenna mini. And we're excited because Pac-10 has announced that they're coming out with a newer version of their linked mini dipole. And so I'll put a link to their website in that and that's something to get excited about. We're gonna hopefully be able to start using that this summer. So let's see, I'm gonna look really fast here. If there's anything else, chat. I don't see anything else here. Oh, well, let's see though, one more here. Okay, there we go. So it looks like we're doing good. We're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll start some uh, music here. I am John Jacobs, W7DBO, with the Ham Radio 360 Field Radio Podcast. Make sure you link in the bottom below for the description for everything that you need to know. I'll link to my W7DBO.net website where you'll find the breakdown and all the uh, items that are in this pack. Thank you for watching.